Welcome to part two of our belt drive tutorial. In part one, we discussed the modeling of the three components that make up our scene, and we took the circumferential length of our drive wheel and multiplied this by four in order to return the correct length of our belt spline. We then went on to create a simple expression to help us create our belt at the correct length. In this, our second part, we're going to focus on principal animation, and we're going to get both our wheels and belt rotating at the correct speeds. Let's open the Expresso Editor and start working on this. The first node that we're going to bring in is a time node. Because we're not going to bother with keyframing, we're going to use the actual timeline to control the animation. And on this occasion, I'm going to work with the time output port. I'm not going to bother working with frames. What actually happens with the time port is that for every 30 frames, we generate a number one. So over the 90 frames, we're going to end up with a three at this output. So from naught to three will be our range. Speaking of which, the second node we need to bring in will be a range mapper. So we'll bring that one in there and set it up here. Plug our times output port into the input and our input lower will be zero. And as I've just mentioned, we need a three in the input upper. So that's that taken care of. Our output lower will be zero. And as we want our drive wheel here to rotate four times over the 90 or actually 91 frames that we've got in the timeline there, we need to multiply 360 by four, which will give us 1440 in the output upper. So that's our first range mapper set up. Our next port of call will be to bring in a degree node. So we'll select one of those from our menu there. Position that there and then connect our output to the input. And this will need to be, in actual fact, a degree to radians because we need to pass this value over to our drive wheel, which we'll bring in there now. And when make that a little bigger because we need to use both the input and output ports here. We'll give this coordinates rotation, rotation P, and plug the output of the degree into the input there. And if we just quickly run the timeline, we can see that our wheel's rotating nicely. So that's the first little piece of our expression sorted out. We'll just give this a coordinates rotation P at the output too, make it a little bit bigger. Our next step is to bring in another degree node. So we'll bring that in there. But on this occasion, this needs to be a radians to degree. We now need another range mapper. In fact, we need two, so we'll bring one in. And we'll position this one down here and just copy that one place it up there. We'll concentrate on the lower one first because this is the one that's going to be driving our large wheel. So we'll plug the input in there. And as with the gears, we know that if we just quickly run through it, we know that our drive wheel is actually half the size of our large wheel. So obviously for every rotation of our drive wheel, we get half a rotation of our large wheel. So the formula we're going to use is exactly the same as for the gears. The input lower is zero, 360 for the input upper, zero again for the output lower, and the output upper, 180. So that gives us our formula for rotating our two wheels correctly. We'll then get another degree node, which is a degree to radians. Just copy this one across here, place this here bring the output into the input there and then drag in our large wheel, give it rotation P at the input and plug the output in there. And now if we run our timeline, everything should sync that far. And it does, you can see that's working nicely. So that's our wheels sorted out. We now need to concentrate on our belt. Now the motion of this is not created by moving the belt itself. In actual fact, what we're going to do is rotate the texture around it. 
And this is really the only way we could go about doing this, because after all, the belt is actually a NURBS object, so there's no geometry that we could influence even if we wanted to. We must move the texture in order to create the illusion. So if we drag the output of our degree into the input of the range mapper, we'll need a value of zero in the input lower. And because, of course, we're using our drive wheel, we know that we want 1440 in the input upper. The output lower will be zero because that's the start position of our drive belts texture. And the output upper will actually be minus one because what we're actually doing is rotating this texture around the belt. What's happening is that the texture is rotating in its y-axis. It's the y-axis of the texture that's actually going to be rotated. So it starts from zero. And if it were rotating in a clockwise direction, then in our output lower, we would need to put a number one. But the texture is actually rotating anti-clockwise, so it's a value of minus one that we need it to finish at. And that's why we've done that. And then all we need is to bring in the belt's texture tag here. And at the input, we come down to tag properties. And offset Y is what we need to bring in there. And then all we do is connect our range mapper's output to our textures offset Y. And now, if we run the timeline, as you can see, everything is working. There is a slight glitch in it, though, if you notice. Just a very slight glitch. And the reason for that is actually a deliberate mistake that I've left in yet again. We're going from naught in our timeline to 90. So we've got 91 frames, but frame naught and frame 90 are identical because obviously at position zero, this is the start position for our wheel and frame 90 is exactly the same because 1440 degrees is exactly the same position because it's four exact rotations. So we need to actually compensate for this. And what we have to do is if we open the calculator again, you probably know this, but for anybody who doesn't know, if we divide 1440 by 90, we get a value of 16. So we need to subtract 16 degrees from our range mappers that deal with the rotation of the, the drive wheel here. So that one wants to become 1424. And this one also, or not that one actually, this one, I beg your pardon, needs to become 1424. And that should solve the problem. We should get a smooth transition now if we run that. And we do. It's absolutely smooth now. Perfect. So that's that little part of the animation sorted out. But the one thing that you can see here is that although the belt and the wheels synchronize perfectly, the belt does look a little bit lifeless. It looks a little bit staid, doesn't it, really? What we need to do is give it some life, give it some dynamics. And we're going to do that in part three. We're going to actually bring this belt to life by making it vibrate. And that's going to be something that should be quite impressive when the whole thing's put together. So that's for part three. Well, that just about completes this tutorial. So we've got it a little bit further and I hope you've enjoyed doing it again and that you've learned a few more things. And I'll see you very soon in part three.